Today, I'm going to continue talking about solo or groups or caravans. Yesterday, I did a video about solo and groups and sort of the difference, but mainly I did talk about my experience and what my preferences were. But we're all different, aren't we? We all have different preferences. And I know so many of you want to travel in groups and you want to learn from other people. So I'm gonna get going. Let's talk about this, okay? And please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for doing that and watch it all the way through. Okay, let's go. Well, yeah, yesterday I talked about solo or groups. And it really kind of depends on your personality. What I mainly talked about was my personality because that was a question that was posed to me. Lee, what do you do? Do you mainly travel solo or do you travel in groups? Well, if you've been watching me over these years, yeah, I travel solo. There was three years I was in a relationship, um, but we pretty much both of us traveled solo. We were just, we were a couple and we traveled together wherever we went. Sometimes we travel apart, but mainly we were together. Well, now we're both, I don't, um, well, at least I know what I'm doing. I am solo again. I am totally solo and I do enjoy it that way. I'm either a solo person or I'm a one-on-one, -on -one, but you might be totally different. And so let's talk about it. Let's talk about what it's like to do a group. Let's talk about what it's like to do a caravan. Now I have a question here and it is from Gracie Lee. Hey, hi Gracie. She says, thank you, Lee. I enjoy your positive personality. Thank you. I plan to work for four more years and I would really like to learn how to car camp. Yeah. I watch a lot of YouTube videos, but I wish I could car camp along with other, get this, along with other solo campers to learn from them. Do you know if anyone plans trips for others to tag along on? Yeah. No, I don't. No, I don't know of anybody that would um, travel solo and want you to, to um, tag along on. But here's, okay, I've got some issues that this is a question I understand. But I'm going to look at it from my perspective. You say that you plan to work for four more years. So you're working and you're established in a certain area. And you would like to learn how to car camp. Now you want to, this is sort of an oxymoron. You said you want to camp along with other solo campers. If we're solo campers, we usually don't travel with other people. And here's the issue that I thought of. You, let's say you're in Missouri. You work. You work in Missouri and I'm a solo camper, but I'm in Arizona. You're up here and I'm kind of down here or yeah, down here. Um, yeah, that, that's a long way to travel just to learn, you know, just to be together camping. <sighs> yeah. So there's also an issue. I mean, you work. Do you know if anyone plans trips for others? to tag along on. Yeah, well, you work. I mean, I don't know if that if that would even coordinate with your schedule because you would have to put time off, you know, put time in. And you would need somebody in your normal area. But here's my suggestion. Let's talk about this. You see my setup and I have, and I've got the book, How to Live in a Minivan, the Minivan Leeway. And I've done so many videos on what you need. I'll leave the link for um, the video about sedan car camping for Quartzsite because it's coming up. Let me move this fan. It's kind of warm today. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Better. Yeah. It's blowing on me here. So there's everything that you would need because I'm not sure where you're at. What, what, if you're going to go find somebody to travel with, and, it, and that actually worked out and you found somebody. I mean, I don't even know exactly, do you have what you think you need? 
for that because I don't think they're going to take you shopping. You know, and anyways, a lot of this you're going to want to um, order on Amazon. I mean, why run all over the place, run over town after town trying to find every little thing? I mean, you can go to Walmart, go in the camping department, or you can go to Dick's Camping or Outdoor, whatever that is, uh, sports. Uh, what is it? Dick's Sport? Um, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Outfitters or something like that or REI. But seriously, you're going to have, if you, this is why I really do recommend Amazon. I do love Amazon. I know they're big and I know that they're taking over some of the mom and pops, but it sure is saving us a lot of uh, gasoline and fuel. You know, you could run, to, I could run to Walmart in my area and they're not going to have what I want. Uh, sometimes they have butane, sometimes they don't, you know, and then it's a wasted trip, right? Uh, so you can go on Amazon, okay? And you can search for what you want. You can check out the different prices. You can check out the different reviews. You can check out whether it's available, the price, everything, okay? So I do recommend that you get a lot of the things from that sedan um, video because that'll get you started, okay? Because I really don't know if you have everything. I just thought I'd mention that. Okay, number two is you're really going to have to experience a lot of this yourself. You're really going to have to experiment also. When I first moved into my minivan, I really had my third row seats were stored down in that little well down there. I hadn't removed them yet. I had my two seats on the second row seats out. They just kind of, I could unclamp them and they were heavy. They were like 60, 70 pounds. They were heavy. And I lifted them out and um, I stored them. But I also had my passenger seat in and then my driver's seat. So I did have all this space, but it looks so different now than when I first started. My suggestion is, is that you really do experiment on your own. You've, you say you've watched videos, You've watched a lot of videos, so you know the basics. You know what you basically need. So I would suggest you put those things in, get a few bins that you can put those things in, and you get in, okay? Maybe get one of these or something, it's a drawer. And then you can put your things in your drawer, but you're gonna have to get in. So here's my suggestion. I suggest you find a campground and you go camping you know you um i don't know if you have to reserve it i don't know what area area you are in i really don't know if you're out west maybe you could find some blm land just go and go try it out and you're gonna have to do some experience i really believe that on some chance i suppose there's always that possibility nothing's impossible that you could you know um ask him to bring you somebody if you really need somebody to show you how to do it but i think you're smart enough and you're gonna you're gonna know what you need once you start experiencing 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 it <laughs> wow that was a hard word to say okay so you're gonna have to do it do it you're gonna have to just do it you know spend a weekend um and go camping and see what it's like but spend like when you get your stove, actually cook inside. Don't take it out to your picnic table on your campsite. Actually do it right here and learn how to do it. Don't be scared of it. If you need to practice with turning on your butane stove, you can take it out to the picnic table. In fact, I, I did that. I did it at a park. I got my first, my stove and I thought, oh my gosh, there's a train going by here. I thought, oh no. So I took it out to a picnic table. And I did it. And it was like, whoo, okay. Oh, this isn't so bad. And I did the same thing when I got my Mr. Buddy, Mr. Buddy heater. I first, I bought a big one. Don't, don't get a big one. <laughs> if it's in the winter, don't go buy a big one. If you have a minivan or an SUV, oh my gosh, you're way too large for this area. It's too big. But 
I did get a big one and I took it out to the picnic table at the park that I hung out at and I did it out there. So you can experiment. You don't know where everything's gonna go yet. It could be a year before you know exactly where you want to place everything for ergonomic reasons, for what you're gonna use the most and to make it um, attractive inside. You don't want this thing piled up, a mess is up, a pile in the in over here and it's just piled up, no. So you're going to, it's going to take a while. So there's my suggestion. Okay. That's one way that you can learn. You just, you jump in. It's kind of like somebody throwing you in the pool. There you go. You're going to swim. You sink or swim. Here's number two. You need to go out as soon as this is over, go out into your car, whatever you own and look around and say to yourself, how am I going to sleep? How am I going to sleep in here? You know your car. You know your, your, your vehicle. Does the front seat go all the way down so you can sleep? And maybe the, the, the uh, back seat folds down this way so you actually have something to sleep on? I don't know. This is something you're going to have to figure out. Can you remove the two seats in the back um, temporarily? Move them out and then move them back in. I don't know what you have. I really don't know. If it's a sedan, I've already talked about that and I'm gonna leave the link for that video. If it's a sedan, you can make a bed in your back seat. Yeah, you can do that. Okay, so there's gonna be one of those things that you're gonna to have to do. Nobody can tell you how to do it. You're the only one that knows. It's another train. Nobody knows your vehicle but you, okay? Now. I wanna talk just briefly about caravans and groups. I mentioned it briefly in yesterday's video. If you didn't see that, go see it, okay? Um, Cause there's all, everyone, I, I will say, every one of my videos has good information in it. It really does. So if you're really interested in this lifestyle, I would watch every one of my videos. It's got good stuff in it. And I told a couple stories about being in groups. Right now, I'm gonna talk about caravans because I've known people that travel in caravans and they've done it before. Some people love it and there you're gonna, finding caravans is gonna be through HAWA. Okay, Home on Wheels Association. It's a nonprofit um, with Sue Ann Carlson and Bob Wells, okay? So you can find a lot of that information on Cheap RV Living on their videos and their websites. But do their website. It's called Cheap RV Living on the website. And you can, um, I think they have information on the caravans. I've never done a caravan, but I do have friends who did. They work fine. It's nice to know that there are people that you can hang with. They do travel. They stay 14 days and then they move to another place. There's a lot of people that work for them. So my friend um, lot did, did help for them. She helped guide them. She put up markers, things like that. She went ahead of the, of the caravan. There, but there's different caravans. And there's a caravan leader he's been doing, or he or she has been doing um, this on a, on, for the long haul. Okay, so they're perfect as leaders. So, but it, it's not problem free. I can tell you right now, it's not problem free. I had one friend that was in a caravan and there were two gals that literally, I'm gonna say bullied in a way because I think it is sort of bullying, but they would come into her rig cause she had a bigger rig, they'd come in there and they literally would make fun of her in there. It made her feel so bad. There's you, you. It's a spice. It's it's a splice of life. Now, as you know, people the way people are. There's good and there's bad. So you have to deal with all of it if you want to be in a caravan. I mean, you can hang by yourself. You don't have to all get together all the time. You just might want the safety of having other people around. You're gonna want to do some socialization with them. You want to socialize with them. Maybe you want to get to know them. You, you, you probably are friendly and you want to get to know them. There's not always friendly people there. <laughs> Another one of my friends was in the caravan and she said this one guy was so grumpy. 
he he just was uh, he was a curmudgeon and it kind of brought the caravan down a little bit yeah he just was mean he was mean-spirited so these are the two instances that I know of okay that were not positive experiences so I'm telling you this so you can be aware that not it's not all like I say it's not all rainbows out there whatever you want to do there's always consequences consequences to what you decide to do there's always going to be consequences one consequence might be that you're parked next to or near somebody who just really doesn't like you and and, and therefore you don't like yeah so there might be contention or something but chances are that maybe it's all going to go well you could just avoid a certain person or you can just you might find a caravan that has just 100 percent pleasant people <laughs> you never know but don't think because one of the mistakes i made it's not really a mistake not really a mistake but it was misguided thinking i thought when i first got out here that the nomad world we're all just one big happy family. We're all nomads, oh wow. We all have the same interests, we all have the same things. Um, we all have the same goals. Not true at all, not true at all. No, there are some, there are some nasty nomads out here. I'll just say it, there really are. And there's some bullies out here too. So it's, you have to remember that it's a splice of, it's a splice of life, it's just, yeah, it's just the way it is. And you're gonna find anybody and everybody, every type out here as a nomad. You're gonna find people you like, some people you like, ugh, ugh. No, I would never hang with that person. Yeah, there's some nice and some bad, yeah. And some quiet, some are, some are um, like uh, recluses, some are just so helpful. Other ones are like, don't bother me. Uh, some are sarcastic some <laughs> and some are just really, really nice. Yeah. Well, what else did I have to say? I do want to do one more suggestion and let you know. If you want to come to Quartzsite um, in the middle of January and Feb in to, for that two week period from the second week of January till the end of January, you're going to meet a lot of people and the RTR is going on. Get to the RTR. Okay, you're gonna meet people. And one thing, yeah, I just was looking. One thing you really, at the very end, they have um, like a nomad show that nomads, what they do is they like to show their rigs. Okay, now a lot of them have uh, YouTube channels. So it's sort of like they promote their YouTube channel. I've never done it. Um, it, it, was, it was sitting out in the sun all that time, no. Um, I can promote my channel here, but uh, so you can walk around. They'll park and they you walk around and you can visit and you can meet a lot of people, YouTube channel people, right? YouTube creators, but you can look in and ask questions. Okay, so there's your biggest um, learning experience because I'm telling you, there are a lot of nomads out. There are some that are just so helpful. Yeah, but there are some that's like, mm, I no, I don't want to show you my rig. Uh, no, I don't know who you are. Um, what's happening, I believe, out here, is that's why you really do need to courtside. What's happening out here is the world is kind of like strange right now. So a lot of people have become a lot more private. So just be aware of that, okay? Okay, well, this is, um, this is all I got to say about this. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Thanks for spending 20 minutes with me. I love you guys. And I think that's, well, I got the book, How to Live in a Minivan, the Minivan Leeway. And it's got list upon list upon list. And it's got all the information you could possibly need to get from A to Z and beyond on the road. It's got everything you need, okay? And it's on Amazon. Just type in Minivan Lee and I will come up, okay? Mwah. Love you guys. Bye.